there's something about realism and comedy that that really gets me, really makes me laugh. And it's not it's not just the jokes; it's it's the moments that feel real, and it's what they suggest that really makes me laugh. And I can pinpoint the exact moment in my life when this started. Now, is this the sort of emotional bed you want to work from? I was about seven or eight, so it'll have been in the late eight, 90s. Uh, I was stood outside Tesco's with my mum. I'd been forced to go shopping on a Saturday when I wanted to be at home playing Spectrum PlayStation. And she was talking to one of her friends and there was another, another lad there. I didn't really know him very well. So we weren't really saying anything. Um, like we were just hoping it would be just a little, a, a quick chat and we'd, we'd get the shopping done and get home. But we, were, we just stood there in silence and I looked over towards the door and there was this security car guy coming out like this, <laughs> swinging his case with a big cheesy grin on his face. And this little kid leaned into my ear and said, that man picks his willy. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing for the rest of the trip. I was still laughing on the way home. It's not because, it's because it's just not a straightforward joke. It was a, it's a combination of things and a combination of suggestions. Like how does one pick a willy? Was he picking his willy then? What is that? Why he was so happy? Does he pick his willy in the van? Does everyone else know that he picks his willy? Why was he swinging like that? Why was he so happy? What was he doing? Who is this man? It's the suggestion of there being a life, more than him just having a cheesy grin on, which sort of amused me anyway. But he did, he did look incredibly happy. But it's just this suggestion that there's, there's a life going on outside. Outside of that, and it's that that's what really makes me laugh. Like, I, I like a lot of different comedies, but that stuff really makes me laugh. So it's, it's moments like in in the office when Gareth has taken over Brent's job and he gets locked in the office and he says, he says something like, Oliver, he's locked me in again, Oliver. <laughs> it's just like, it, it's, it's funny enough that he gets locked in, but the fact that, that this, is, this is a recurring thing makes it that much more funny. And this moment in human re remains. Which is she all? Are you picking at that? Look, don't pick at it. Which is she all over? Like the the common the comedies that have some sort of realism to them, that are improvised. They 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 don't have moments like that because the, the way he says that, don't pick at it. If if they were improvising that, like comedians that are sort of trained in improvisation, they would they would take that moment and then riff on it and take it further and further. Um, have you got him coffee? Right. Did you get some coffee? What? Yeah. Chuck, I got coffee. I thought you were going to... Oh, for Christ. But in this, they don't do that because that's not what happens in, in sort of real life. It, that's, it, first off, it implies something else. Like, what is it that she's picking at? Have they had this discussion before? They must have. She must be doing it a lot. Is, is it a problem? Who knows? There's a lot more there that's it's suggesting stuff. But it's also like they're, they're both already on their trajectories. They're not going to be taken off just by a little thing like that because that's, it's just something normal to them. They'll probably address it later. Would you get any suggesting more? Which <laughs> that's what makes me laugh. As soon as the camera's off, are they going to have an argument about this picking thing? Who knows? I mean, with the tropicals, when we add them in there, I mean, day and night, you worry about them. I mean, with him, he just gets on with it, you know. Stephen killed them. No, he didn't. Right, through to the. Uh... Anyway, though, that's just my intro to. This is what I'm going to be talking about in these series of videos. The specifics about realistic comedy, but specifically today, I want to talk about human remains. <laughs> Human Remains is a dark comedy mockumentary from the year 2000. There's six episodes in it. They're all written and star, written by and star Rob Brydon and Julia Davis. They play cu different couples in every episode who all have problems of different kinds. Some funny, some just incredibly depressing. What are you thinking about, love? Taking my own life. And I think that the, the, the thing that works about it being depressing is that it feels so real. It's like, like the sort of... Something that wasn't going for realism, I don't think could get away with going that dark, because the last one is just cripplingly depressing. Um, if you if you've seen uh, film, films like Happiness, you'll kind of know the the area we're in here. That what 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 you're getting is, is a window into a life that's very sad and very complicated, and there's there's a lot there, and there's a lot suggested that's going on outside of it. Things that things that come up at the end are never fully addressed. Like in the, the last episode, they keep talking about the twins that are. I don't think they ever fully address it, but it's like it's to, the twins were like kids, some kids that they lost at some point. I don't know how young they were or anything, but they just suggest that that's the, the sadness all the way through it, that, and that's that's why it works because they couldn't they couldn't just come out and make a joke about that because it'd be just like why why are you doing that? But the fact that the characters feel real and lived in and 
you're getting a view into their strange little life. It, it, it doesn't justify it as such, but it makes it, instead of it just being a comedy, it, 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 you get more of an emotional attachment to it, so it works better that way. Open my heart, and you know, you can look inside and just take whatever you want. And The humour in it's in the subtlety, the little lines here and there, it, it, every, every scene doesn't end on a punchline, which is the way that sort of mock docs have gone recently. It definitely does at times, though, from what I remember, but... Most of the bits that made me laugh the most are just little throwaway comments, a little bits of character. They're bits that make you that make you understand the, the character more than it just being a joke. Is this yours, George? Shall I finish it off? Just drain it for you. Yeah, every one of the characters is is, is fully rounded and their world is fully realised. And you, you, they, every one of them could have been spread out into a full series like they did with um, Phoenix Knights from that PK thing, which was similar. I wonder if they were trying for that sort of thing. But yeah, it, it didn't happen with any of these characters. But obviously, Bryden went on and did Marion and Jeff, which is, which I love as well. I, I think actually I like Human Remains more just because of how dark it is. But Marion, Marion and Jeff is a much lighter show. So that, if you want to feel good, watch Marion and Jeff. If you want to feel a bit more, <laughs> then try Human Remains. And Julia Davis went on to to write uh, Ninety Ninety Night. I've never seen it, so I, I don't know. I can't comment on the quality of that. But if anyone's seen it, drop, tell us in the comments below. I might check it out later on. So yeah, if you if you like dark, subtle humour, full of British eccentricities, yeah, unique characters, unique worlds, then you can do far worse than Human Remains. I highly recommend it. Um, also, Marion and Jeff. If you if you want a bit of light dessert after watching all that, Marion and Jeff, I definitely recommend that as well. So Human Remains, nine out of ten. Check it out. If you enjoyed this video, tell us below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll be back next week on reviews on realism. Tati bye.